Let's close out with modern client development and the announcements there. Um, we've done quite a few webinars on Blazor um, and it is one of the exciting, exciting new frameworks that runs on top of .NET 6. Um, I do believe that Blazor and all the different flavors is going to be the new, quote, new normal .NET application. Um, as we go forward and we say, oh, I'm building a web, web app on .NET. People will just assume that it's a Blazor app. Um, when you're augmenting, modernizing, or building a WPF app, um, over time, WPF will be the shell and the nativeness, but the screens will be Blazor screens. Same with WinForms, same with the, the system tray applications, and same with mobile, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but uh, we're not going to go deep into Blazor. There's plenty of other content we've put out. If you're not familiar with Blazor, um, just join uh, join our, our community. Uh, I believe the URLs are in the chat. We have webinar archives. We have plenty on Blazor that you can get access to. Um, but Blazor is huge from an architectural perspective. This should completely shift what your .NET team is doing because chances are your longtime uh, .NET developers understand HTML and CSS. All of your web application developers understand all those and they just drop into Blazor. And this becomes what I would, I would predict becomes the common write once run everywhere um, framework for user interfaces. Now, Blazor, again, it's just a user interface framework. It sits on top of C Sharp, on top of .NET. Uh, for, for saving data to relational databases, you got entity framework for programs talking to each other, you still got web API. This is just a user interface framework. Whereas what are the other choices? The other choices are MVC, um, React, Angular, WinForms, WPF, uh, and, uh, and this allows all of your code. Well, some of your code will be HTML, some of it CSS, but all the rest of the code is C sharp. And so this competes directly and gives us an alternative to Angular and React and Vue, where all of the user interface code had to be TypeScript. So that's huge. This definitely, if you, if you are not already strategizing adoption of Blazor, I recommend that you do so. Okay. Um, .NET 6 actually had some enhancements over .NET 5. Uh, they just kind of play into it, make it faster, um, things like that. But it's really just about .NET 6 providing the canonical version three of Blazor. And so, you know, we, we jumped on Blazor when it was still in .NET Core um, and there were definitely bleeding edge elements, but then you had the enhancements for .NET 5 and then .NET 6 gives you the full version three of Blazor. And it really is, really is compelling at this point. Um, when we started, when it was still .NET Core, uh, there were not a whole lot of UI components like there are now. Microsoft's Fluent UI components are available for Blazor natively through the Blazor Fluent UI wrapper. You can find that in NuGet um, and you can go on Microsoft's website to, to see demos of all the controls available as well as Radson controls and, um, and Infragistics and all the, the, the commercial controls. Uh, the control vendors component, they've really caught up and have a lot of first-class uh, UI components for Blazor. So it's a really good ecosystem 